So today the Commission agreed on an EU action plan for the irregular route on the central med. Uh, and this is um, uh, before the uh, upcoming extraordinary JHA Council on Friday that will be discussing these routes but also other route is, routes of irregular arrivals. We have seen an increase of irregular arrivals to the EU uh, this year. We see too many people that fall in the hands of smugglers. Approximately at least 90% of those arriving irregularly are using smugglers. And we also see people actually losing their lives along these routes. Last year, we had an uh, intense uh, focus on the Western um, and with the Atlantic and the Western Mediterranean uh, route, where we now see a decrease of irregular arrivals. We also had last year a lot of focus on the instrumentalization uh, from uh, Belarus, and there we also a situation that we have managed together. The last weeks or the last months, there have been a lot of focus on the Western Balkan route, uh, where we've seen a significant increase, uh, three times more arrivals this year compared to last year, 14 times more compared to 2019. Uh, I presented uh, earlier uh, four pillars of action to counter the irregular arrivals along the Western Balkan routes, and I also launched a new operational partnership on uh, anti-smuggling together with all the six Western Balkan partners in Tirana uh, two weeks ago. But today is the focus on the Central Med. The, the latest, latest events confirm that this situation is not sustainable. This route continues to be one with the highest number of irregular arrivals, but also one of the most dangerous routes. 90,000 arrivals this year, an increase with all more than 50% compared to last year. And the specific nature of arrivals by sea requires us to step up our shared efforts. Of course, this is not a new route. Uh, there have been a challenging uh, and a busy route for a long time on the Central Med. And we have been working and also achieved progress uh, early in the past years. For example, with good cooperation uh, with Niger, we have significantly reduced the arrivals uh, coming from uh, south of Sahara uh, into uh, the European Union. But uh, with the increase we see now, it's also necessary with new steps. The action plan I'm presenting today has three pillars. First, strengthening the cooperation with partner countries and international organizations. Second, a more coordinated approach on search and rescue. And third, reinforced implementation of the voluntary solidarity mechanism and the joint roadmap to adopt the pact. Within this frame, we present 20 actions. The plan is, in short, a call for an acceleration of implementing operational measures, but also, of course, some new steps. The action plan is a renewed commitment of all actors. First, on the first pillar, on cooperation with partners. Uh, of course, the cooperation with third countries, countries of origin and countries of transit, is uh, uh, essential, and the close cooperation with the UN organizations. We must consider that the significant majority of people who arrive on this central med route today are not in need of international protection. Migrants arriving through Libya are predominantly from Egypt, Tunisia and Bangladesh. That's exactly the reason why I went to Bangladesh last week. Uh, to reach out to the authorities, to the government, on how to prevent the irregular arrivals from Bangladesh and also to increase the returns directly back to Bangladesh with Bangladeshi nationals. And it was a very successful mis mission, I must say. So I um, expect uh, the returns to Bangladesh to be increasing uh, significantly now. We have seen actually 11,000 Bangladeshis arriving this uh, route via Libya this year already. And of course, this is not a proper way to arrive to the European Union. Uh, I also talked with Bangladeshi government on legal pathways, because we need also labor migration to the European Union. But that has to be in an orderly way and not via this uh, dangerous route on irregular arrivals. 
We have also, as I said, seen uh, a quite uh, a progress when it comes to the um, to prevent uh, people south of Sahara to enter into this deadly route. The significant decrease of uh, sub-Saharan citizens entering into European Union through the Central Med route, and that's very much thanks to our good cooperation with Niger, but also with other countries. Where I uh, earlier um, this year presented and launched an operational anti-smuggling partnership together with the Nigerian Minister of Interior. We will now also reinforce uh, our work with other actions. We will uh, reinforce the trilateral cooperation with the EU African Union UN task force that we have to help people that are stranded in Libya. Uh, this year, already more than 3,000 people have been voluntarily uh, returned from Libya to the country of origin. Since we started this work together with UN and African Union, more than 60,000 people have been voluntarily returned from Libya. We also have a resettlement program for uh, vulnerable people in need of international protection. On the 12th of December, uh, I will launch, uh, we will launch uh, the Team Europe initiative on the Central Mediterranean route together with member states and partner countries. And we are also stepping up on returns and readmission cooperation with all partners. We are also opening further pathways for, to those in need, of, uh, in need of protection and for legal migration, as I already said. Next week, I will be hosting the high-level resettlement forum, reiterating these efforts. To make all this operational, we are backing this up with financial support. The money already committed for to 2021 to 2023 under NDICI Global Europe Instrument is 580 million euros to back up these efforts that I'm now presenting. Second is the search and rescue pillar. The legal ob obligation to rescue and to ensure the safety of life at sea is clear and, and unequivocal. This is irrespective of the circumstances that lead people to be in a situation of distress. This is important to underline. Saving lives is always the first obligation. But there are many challenges here. The situation today with the private vessels operating at sea is a scenario which still lacks sufficient clarity. This current challenge was were not the, thought of when maritime law was first agreed. There is a need for more cooperation between member states, flag states and coastal states and other relevant actors. While this area falls mainly under the competence or responsibility of the member states, however, we have proposed with the pact a path for a more coordinated approach on search and rescue. We have, for instance, put in place a European contact group on search and rescue. And cooperation with both UNHCR and IOM will be stepped up in this area. And I also think that new discussions with the International Maritime Organization will need to take place. Third pillar is the voluntary solidarity mechanism. We have this mechanism in place since summer, very much thanks to the French presidency. We have a good pledge, more than 8,000. And it's clear we need to step up on implementation. Relocation is ongoing, but still a low number of people has been relocated under this mechanism. So we have to reinforce our work in the existing framework, the voluntary solidarity mechanism, so that it be been used to its full uh, possibilities. In the solidarity platform, we have been working with member states to ensure the full implementation of the mechanism, including by addressing operational bottlenecks. We will revise standard operating procedures to speed up relocations. And we will look at financial contributions being effectively matched to projects. And we will also work close together with the EU Asylum Agency. As I started to say, there will be an extraordinary uh, Home Affairs Council this Friday, addressing the current situation on all migratory routes. This will be in addition to the scheduled JAA HA Council, which will take place on the 8th of December, and where I am 
confident that under the leadership of the Czech presidency, we can make further progress on the pact. Because the pact remains the only way to put in place a stable and sustainable framework to address migratory challenges. With the pact, a common European solution is on the table. Adopting it remains our key priority, and I'm very uh, happy that we can see good progress uh, thanks to the very important work by the Czech presidency. Together with Vice President Skinas, I will also be addressing the latest migration developments in the European Parliament and uh, the plenary on Wednesday morning. And we have, I'm sure, the commitment of everyone to advance our important work on migration. We remain vigilant to all the routes. In the Council, I will give an overview to ministers on where we stand on all routes, as I also did uh, briefly to you here today, what we have achieved and what remains to be done. And while continuing to support with operational actions, I will remain again the importance to, uh, to, need, the, the importance to adopt the pact. Thank you.